Hi everyone, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Anglo Geist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. This is the daily forecast. It is for all signs. It is a broad spectrum reading, so I do speak in broad terms. It's originally created for um, Thursday, March 2nd, but it's not solely set for that date. If you're seeing it on a different date, but it makes sense to your situation, how you're feeling, what you're thinking, by all means, utilize it to your highest good. Um, uh, I do believe that readings can be timeless and they find us when we need them, not necessarily when they were originally created for. Um, for those of you that are new, oh, if it doesn't make sense, that's okay. Nothing's broken or wrong. If it doesn't fit, that just means you're working on something different. This just may not be your reading. Um, for those of you that are new, please check out the drop-down menu under any of my videos. In there is some housekeeping information, things I want you to think about when utilizing the channel, what decks I'm using, um, how to follow me on social media and request a private reading, either at my Instagram or my Facebook business page. You can send me a message there. Uh, know that I will never solicit you for a reading. And then there's also really important uh, easy way to support the channel. Uh, one way of doing that is hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel if you feel so inclined, leaving me a question or comment on any of the videos. I do read them all and appreciate them all and sharing the video out. I will be referring back to the Sunday underpinning energy, which is the video that populates in the lower left-hand corner of this video. So if you hear me talking about cards that you don't see in this reading, I'm usually referring back to that. So check that out. Let's see what the card is for today. I have to say, I love how this deck shuffles, this Muse Tarot. All right, oh, we have the Devil. Ooh, damn, no joke. Major Arcana. Okay, guys. The devil signifies addictions, compulsions, fears. Um, wherever we feel restrained, chained, locked in, obsessed. Um, the thing about the devil, to me, is that the devil is always there to show us where our weak points are right? It's not, it is, a, it is a scary card, right? Similar to yesterday's um, tower card. It's kind of showing us like where we need to work for sure through the challenges that we face or the addictions or the obsessions that we carry, the fears that we might carry, the self-placed limitations that we might put on ourselves or others that usually lead to obviously negativity, um, more fear, more anxiety, helplessness, um, this idea of, ooh, I can't do it, um, I can't accomplish this. What's interesting to me is yesterday's grounding stone, also when we saw that tower card, is uh, with strength. And strength usually combats the devil. So it's interesting. We'll see what the grounding stone is today. But the grounding stone for the week is that word respect. And when I look at this devil, especially this feminine presence down at the bottom, is we need to respect. And, when I, and what I mean by respect in this scenario is not like, oh, the devil's bigger than me or, oh, this situation is bigger than me, so I'm going to give it power in my life. We need to respect the power or the, the drama, the chaos, the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The toxicity of something going on in our life. And I think that this devil is connected to that tower. Whatever was falling apart, like I don't know why I want to say this, but like the fall apart from yesterday's tower clarifier is showing us this devil bright and clearly right now in our life. So um, let's see what the other cards are really quick before I speak more on this because I have a feeling like this is actually a good thing. It's like we cannot, with the devil being present, we can no longer deny what's going on or what we maybe were making excuses for. Um, remember, the empress was underneath all of this in the beginning of the week, and she's, I feel like her feminine, divine feminine presence or her desire for beauty, her desire for peace, calm, harmony within her relationships is calling this devil to the surface 
through that dis uh, disassembling of the tower, right? Like the tower has crumbled and what is left? Oh, this. This was the foundation that it was all built upon. This foundation that was faulty. This devil would be that faulty foundation. This would be an anxiety, an obsession, an addiction, uh, an unwillingness to maybe leave a relationship or situation because we feel like we can't. We feel like we're chained to it for some reason. We need it. Maybe it's a toxic workplace or it's a toxic partner, um, somebody who doesn't treat us right. It can be a toxic family member or, or friendship that doesn't give us back what we deserve or what we need. But it's staring us clear in the face today is my feeling. But I don't think that this is a bad thing. I think that this is this also sort of some of that truth that we saw in yesterday's Ace of Swords. Wow. Okay, so here's the Gabby Bernstein Miracles Now uh, card. I let go and allow the universe to do her thing. So, and I love, look at the reds here and the reds here. They kind of coincide. In other words, letting go is letting go of the obsession or the drama that the devil creates in this situation or a relationship or a life or this person. Um... Letting go and allowing the universe to do her thing also reminds me of the six of voices we saw yesterday, which is that clarity, clarity of thought, clarity of communication, moving to calmer waters. We might find ourselves saying nothing in this moment or pulling back, withdrawing, because the situation has just gotten to a, um, uh, like, a, I want to say such an obvious state of what it is that we realize it's no longer in alignment to us or we cannot work within it. It's not healthy anymore. And so we need to let go and allow the universe to transform it. Um, we can't control it. We can't change it. And this might be some of the truth that is in that Ace of Swords that was the last clarifier yesterday because yesterday we had a heavy relationship vibe to it. This feels like something that we're in relationship to where that relationship is not healthy for us. And we have to examine that. And it, this can be a person or a situation, but this can also be our relationship to food or to spending of money. But whatever it is, it's not in alignment with the Empress's abundance that she wants to bring to us from the beginning of the week. And it's definitely, I will say this, it's in alignment to the Ten of Wands that is the midweek card, which is releasing of the burden, right? The letting go of that heavy burden on our spirit. The devil wants to keep our spirit burdened. But we're not allowing that this week. We're like letting go and allowing the universe to do her thing. Like, take this away from me. I don't want this anymore. I can't, um, what's the word, like interact within this situation or with this, this thing anymore because it just, it harms me. It doesn't bring me pleasure. It brings more pain and sadness and struggle than anything else, right? So I like this, I, I let go and allow the universe to do her thing because it feels like we have to turn and open ourselves up to spirit, to that feminine presence we saw in the Six of Voices yesterday, which is either our higher self or our divine feminine nature. Um, our, and it, what's interesting here is I love that there's a woman here, but see how this is all very red and fiery and down here it's all very cool and blue, like this still looks to me like that feminine presence that was lifting the man up in the vo voice, in the Six of Voices yesterday. This still could be some of the em Empress's divine feminine presence pushing against the heat and the turmoil of this devil. Like, I'm not saying we're supposed to fight it, but we might be able to, I don't know if it's like do shadow work or come to terms with the situation, but as we come to terms with it and see it for what it is, we do have to let it go and allow the universe to step in and work with it because it's no longer within our control. It hasn't been for a while. Let's just say that. Let's look at the clarifiers. We have the Page of Pentacles. We have the Chariot, Cancerian Energy. And we have the Ten of Pentacles. So what I'm going to say with these clarifiers, I feel like there is success here, even though the devil is kind of uh, a pretty, for lack of a better term, wicked card. The Page of Pentacles is about 
slow movement. It can sometimes be a card of breadcrumbing. It can be about learning a new way in the 3D of how to be or how to act, what decisions to make, making new choices. We did have the Two of Pentacles in yesterday's reading, right? where we had to make choices. We might be feeling a little bit stronger in those choices, but not quite as strong as we need to be. That would be the page's energy, because the page is always represented by youth, so they don't necessarily have all of the information, but they're willing to learn or make new choices to learn through the process. So I feel like even though we've got the, and devil is Capricorn energy, right? So earth energy, and page is also earth energy. What I feel like is that the Two of Pentacles from yesterday's reading has expanded into this page and we're still making decisions kind of maybe on the fly within a situation, but we've also opened ourselves up to allowing the universe in to help us with this situation, to do the its thing, to sort of maybe heal this, change this, or remove it from our space. It will be removed because the Cancerian energy of the chariot, chariot is celebratory, it's success, it's forward movement. It's about Cancerian energy, which is emotional, but also nurturing. So what this tells me is while we are maybe being a little bit, I don't want to say soft with ourselves, but nurturing with ourselves while we move through this situation, and it may be step by step, that is the page of pentacles, right? But the chariot will carry, carry us through. There's a clear destination here or an area that we are moving towards. And that area to me feels represent, representational of the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is a completion. Tens, we have the Ten of Wands underpinning this, right? So we have two tens at work here. Completions not only for ourselves, but for the entirety of the situation for everyone involved. The Ten of Pentacles would indicate an optimum sort of 3D outcome. I think this optimum 3D outcome is for us, and I also feel like it's further down the road. I don't know if it's for the other counterpart that the devil represents, if that makes sense. So if some of you are dealing with a specific relationship that this pertains to, they may not experience this Ten of Pentacles, but it's possible maybe they can, or it really, honestly, to me, it doesn't matter if they do. What matters is that we make the right choices and allow ourselves to be carried forward in a self-nurturing, emotional feeling place where we maybe give ourselves grace to move on, to make the decisions in the moment that maybe, you know, we may not feel super sure about, but they are actually leading us to a beneficial transformation that will be better than expected in our 3D world or within the situations or relationships that we find ourselves in where we're dealing with this toxic fear of the devil. Let's go to the grounding stone. <clears throat> Okay, the grounding stone is the word forgive on tiger's eye. So my question here when we come to this, forgiveness is uh, definitely an energy that allows us to release. That's the Ten of Wands. That's also the letting go and let the universe step in. The forgiveness can fall in a couple of different places. It can either be forgiveness for whatever this devil represents, because that allows us to like almost detach, no longer resist, no longer fight, no longer try to change or manipulate. But also there's a level of forgiveness for ourselves in here with the chariot and the Cancerian energy that that represents. That's that self-nurturing emotional energy. We may need to forgive ourselves enough within one of the, whatever this devil is, because it is about obsession. It is about us at some point being stuck or uh, can't break free and maybe partaking in behaviors, actions, choices that we at the time might have felt right about, but we've realized now where we're at now, they just aren't. They weren't, they weren't the right choice. It wasn't good, but that's okay. We've learned something. Remember yesterday's card was about relationships uh, are uh, an assignment for growth and um, healing. So all of this is leading to our own sort of independence, our own self-worth ultimately. So if we find ourselves needing to forgive ourselves too within whatever this devil situation is, by all means, ground in that and let that also carry you out of it. Does that make sense? I think that does make sense. Finding forgiveness for other parties in the situation, the situation itself, the item we might be obsessed with or the, the behavior that we've been partaking in that we don't want to be anymore. 
we need to like that forgiveness um it releases it it lightens it it, it almost disengages the control that the devil may have that is your reading. I hope it makes sense. Please leave me a question or comment. This feels like a very pivotal moment for some of you. Um, subscribe, share the video out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.